Thank you, and, and good morning, everyone. It's a, an enormous honor and pleasure to be here. And um, far from being sort of ahead of the game, I think what I've done uh, for the last 15 years or so is actually observed and looked at what a lot of both individuals and companies and, and UN agencies and students' organizations sitting in this room have done and try to capture it and write about it. So in terms of ideas to action, you're the folks who are actually making the action happen. And I think you know, the role of me and others in the academy should be to, to you know, try and sort of share those and understand them and, 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 and spread them. So it's somewhat humbling to be, be up here as I look around the room and recognize a number of faces of people who, who have been the real innovators. Um, and as, as Steve says, you know, we're, we're sort of you know, 10, 15 years into this new way of doing business. I, um, like some of you in the room, was at the, the, the Rio Earth Summit um, in, in Rio de Janeiro in 1992. And I was working at the time for the, the very new Business Council for Sustainable Development, which is now the World Business Council for Sustainable Development. And I see Georgia there from the World Bank as well. Um, the, the Business Council for Sustainable Development and the World Bank had our, our little booths at the, at the NGO forum in Flamingo Park in Rio de Janeiro. And some enterprising uh, sort of environmental and indigenous people NGOs sort of thought, well, the best way of interaction with the business community and the World Bank would be to burn down our booths. <laughs> And that was literally, you know, sort of 1992. I mean, it was a you know, bad caricature, but there, you know, there, there was you know, not only you know, very little communication, but I think enormous distrust. And, and there still is distrust. And I think you know, you know, the business community in particular has, um, you know, continues to have a lot of work to do to, to build trust with, with civil society, with human rights organizations, non-governmental organizations, and, and UN agencies. But we've clearly seen, as, as we've heard in the last few days, an enormous um, sort of movement in, in, in the last sort of 10 years to, to a new way of doing business. And I think we're now at, a, I, I think, an important inflection point in that, you know, we need to ask ourselves, how do we move beyond, you know, the individual projects to much more systemic impact and what can we do to dramatically increase both the quantity and the quality of private sector resources going to developing countries. You know, what can we do to both increase the, 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 sort of the, the scale and the leverage of the private sector impact on the one hand and the innovation and the impact on the other. Um, and what other way of looking at it as I, as I sort of think of it, I sort of think of two large circles. On the one hand, we have business needs, business competencies, and business values of companies. And on the other hand, we have the development needs, the capabilities, um, and the aspirations of, 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 of low-income communities, whether it's in Africa or Asia, or even part of this country. And how do, we, how do we increase that overlap between the business needs and the development needs, and the competencies of business and the capabilities of developing communities to have as much overlap between those two as possible? And what I'd like to sort of focus on um, in, in the next sort of 15 minutes is, is sort of three uh, critical areas of, of both leverage and, and innovation that um, we're already doing things in, but I think have enormous opportunity both to scale up but also have more collective action in. Um, and the first that I want to focus on in terms of the private sector and development is sort of innovation in core business models and supply chains. And whether it's sort of global supply chains or the supply chains between the rural village in Africa to the rapidly urbanizing African city center that um, Dr. Anna just spoke about, how do we make business models and value chains work better for the, for the poor? And I think, and I, you know, and I think it's, it's a very obvious statement to make, but, but worth restating again and again that if we're really serious about development and poverty alleviation, the single most important thing the private sector can do is obviously mainstream direct investment, um, uh, 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 you know, direct innovation, business linkages, and trade. You know, one of the statistics to me from yesterday was, um, was Pamela Passman you know, from, um, from Microsoft talking about their 700,000 business partners who are creating you know, $300 billion in, in wealth. 
and Dr. Anna was talking about Coca-Cola, one of the breakout groups yesterday, and there was a comment that just in Africa alone, Coca-Cola has 900,000 retail outlets, sort of you know, small micro entrepreneurs, um, you know, small manual distribution centers, um, other you know, you know, small businesses that are, that are part of the value chain. We heard about Heinz yesterday and their tomato project. You know, one tomato project with USAID is reaching your know, 4,000 um, Egyptian farmers and, and, and tomato growers in Egypt. So if, if we were to add up you know, just the 100 or so members of, of the Business Civic Leadership Center and, and, and understood that sort of development multiplier of your core business operations, it would be phenomenal. And yet how do we make those business operations even more inclusive of the poor? And I think one of the big sort of innovations that, that, that I think where we're starting to see is all the thinking around whether we call it base of the pyramid or in, inclusive business models. How do we create more inclusive um, supply chains that actually include poor people as producers, as employees, and as consumers and customers. Because the World Bank, United Nations have both got compelling evidence now that the single most important thing that lifts anyone out of poverty, as you were just sort of saying just now, Steve, and Dr. Anna was saying, is either entrepreneurship and self-employment or access to employment and, and, and salaries and wages. And so how do, we, how do we engage the poor as producers and consumers along our, our corporate value chains? And then the second great factor that lifts people out of poverty is affordable access to essential goods and services. And we know what they are. It's health, it's education, it's clean water and sanitation, it's energy, it's housing. And how, you know, we've had years and years now showing that public sector delivery of those so-called public goods alone doesn't work. But pure private commercial sector delivery you know, will sometimes work, but often when you know, they don't have the, the, the resources to pay for it, that doesn't work on its own either. So what are the fundamentally new hybrid models we need that you know, will both you know, create jobs and include the poor as producers and employees, but also provide access to basic services? And I think we're obviously seeing lots of very interesting examples, and we've heard some of them in the last few days. Two of the areas where I think there's real potential for, for growing scale and innovation are in what I would call sort of business to business, you know, the B2B partnerships between companies in this room. So you know, we, we talk about agricultural value chains. How do we get the agricultural companies to work with SAP and Microsoft and Cisco Systems or to work with some of the banks, the local banks, to extend the value chain so it's not just you know, agricultural companies working together but working across sector. Um, as you do in a business ecosystem here in the States, how can we make um, sort of cross-sector business ecosystems work more for the poor? And I was just talking to Heino from SAP earlier and you know, they're starting a pilot project in Ghana with with the shea butter growers in, in the north of Ghana and you know, working with microfinance institutions, agribusiness companies to sort of extend, stretch the value chain so that it reaches both to the, 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 the small scale farmer on the one hand with credit, with infrastructure, with, um, with technology, but also reaches to the low income slum dweller who currently can't afford to buy the food that the, 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 the small scale farmer can't afford to get to the city. So how do we make those value chains work better? And I think a more integrated approach to value chains is going to be one of the big areas of, of, of innovation. I think linked to that, we talked yesterday about what the private sector and what the US government can do. I think one of the most exciting areas um, that we're just beginning uh, you know, to uh, sort of see um, sort of blossoming is the whole area of innovative financing mechanisms. Um, I think we have someone from the British Department for International Development here, but one of the things they've done is set up what they call challenge funds. And, and they, you know, they've got like a tourism challenge fund and a financial deepening challenge fund. And I think there's an enormous opportunity for the US government as well to set up sort of innovation funds or challenge funds that you know, help to cover some of the, the costs and address some of the risks that, that American companies or even African and Asian companies face in serving the poor along their value chain. I know some companies in this room, and I see Bo here from, from, from Dow Chemical, are setting up internal sort of venture capital funds or, or innovation funds. So Dow has what it calls its global challenges and actually sort of using the mindset of, of your venture capital funding and challenge funding either within companies or as I say the public sector providing that funding for American companies to go overseas, I think is, 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 is another big area of, of, of innovation that we're going to see. 